guess what? A new processor's coming out, and it's supposed to be really fast, so let's check it out. It is called the Ryzen AI 9 HX375 CPU. What the hell is a Ryzen AI 9? HX. What is it? And it gets even worse. They're literally going to have ones called Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. I wouldn't be surprised if they throw in some X's in there. Throw in some gaming or some extreme in here. It is so bad that AMD themselves actually have a decoder. You have to decipher what CPUs this company is making in order to buy them properly. Intel is not free from this either. Intel makes a, you know, the other iconic Core i branding it goes boom 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 everybody knows the core branding that the core i it's iconic to intel but intel is like nah we're gonna make it a core 7 or a 150 u what the hell is that we're gonna put ultra literally in the name of the processor now this leads to the point like hey hey if you're like out on the market now and you just want to buy like a laptop for example what are you buying buying laptops is like a chore it is a full-time job if you actually want to research the laptop that you want to see reviews 7520u I, I don't know but seven is like a pretty recent number for amd so i think this is a pretty new processor it's pretty fast this is only a second generation processor from amd but this number looks like a lot bigger than it is. And that's the thing is this isn't even restricted to just these weird CPUs on a laptop market, okay? This also applies to things like graphics cards. Nvidia is famous for making the most bullshit decisions with their naming and confusing SKUs for their graphics cards ever for whatever reason, maybe just to confuse us, you know? Because here's an RTX 3060. Most of you guys probably know this graphics card as being one of the most popular graphics cards in the world, at least according to the Steam hardware survey. And one of the big things about it is it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. But did you know, Nvidia launched an eight gigabyte version of a 3060, which doesn't sound that crazy. Oh, you don't need VRAM, so you just don't buy the VRAM. But that isn't even true because this card was priced the same as the 12 gigabyte version of the card. So you're not saving any money on it. And the actual chip inside, not, not just the memory bandwidth and the speed of the VRAM on the card because it has less now, the actual chip inside the card was cut down. The eight gigabyte one is significantly slower than the 12 gigabyte card for no other reason than to trick you into buying the wrong one. You're getting a 3050 at this point. And speaking of the 3050, you know, Nvidia also managed to screw that one up too. There's an eight gigabyte version, but little did you know, there's actually a six gigabyte version of this card as well. And if we go back over to PC Part Picker, now these cards, luckily, the 3050 six gigabyte actually goes for a lower price than the eight gigabyte version. But that lower gigabyte card is not worth getting versus the higher tier card is actually significantly slower. And we can see this here from Hardware Unbox. You can see a 3050 eight gigabyte here is at 73 FPS. And then the 3056 gigabytes only at 60 FPS. So you're taking a huge performance hit, but you might think that you're getting the same card. This applies to other NVIDIA graphics cards. The RTX 4070, it's like, oh, that's a pretty good card and everything. Do you ever wonder how many RTX 4070s there are and why this exists? Because we also got a 4070 Super. Now, to the average person, what is the difference between a 4070 and 4070 Super? There's also a 4070 Ti. So there's, count them, three 4070 variants at this point in time. Yet the 4070 Ti actually launched at $800 and the normal 4070 launched at $600. And now is actually going for $550 at the moment. But what are you getting when you get a 4070 Ti? I mean, you should probably get it because there's some some letters at the end of it. It makes it a lot better. But did you know that this 4070 Ti was actually originally at one point a 4080 12 gigabytes. So this was a completely different performance tier of graphics card according to Nvidia, which probably would have been even more confusing because the 4080 normally has 16 gigabytes. It would have been the same situation really as a 3050, six and eight gigabyte or a 3060. This would have been insanely confusing to begin with. Oh, you guys really like the 4070. You must want another 4070. So there's a 4070 Ti Super. These namings are just confusing for the sake of being confusing. But then did you ever wonder that Nvidia actually might use this confusion to their advantage? And here is this card, you know, out of the mist, out of the rubble called the 4070 with the GDDR6. This makes five 4070 variants, but this one has GDDR6 because the original 
4070 had GDDR6X. The GDDR6X one is the normal one that was advertised from the start, cost $560. The GDDR6 version cost $550. Now we've seen many cases too, where it doesn't really end up being that much different in price. There's all kinds of situations where this card here, even though it actually has downgraded specs, and if we check out some stuff from Hardware Unbox, it does noticeably perform slower than the other card. It's being sold at the same price, and this is so clearly done that it's just really hard for the end consumer to tell what is happening. The end consumer doesn't really know what card you're getting or what the difference is between a GDDR6 version and GDDR6 X version. And the thing is, I, I just want to say one thing here is AMD isn't exactly innocent from this on their graphics cards either, but they do have a much better track record than Nvidia does, like much, much better. But the 7900 XTX, I think its name is pretty stupid. Why are there so many Xs? I mean, it's twice as extreme. So does that mean the extremes cancel out? That doesn't even bring me to one of the worst parts. If you want to buy any tech for your computer or really anything in general, why is it so hard to figure out what the hell you're buying and if one thing is actually better than another thing is it worth your money because obviously this is done very intentionally but i want to bring up this thing i hate motherboard naming it is terrible because here's a b650 from gigabyte gaming x ax they hit they hit all the buzzwords in there should have put rgb in the name too what does that mean what? And it just seems like these things are getting out of hand, really, because if you look at motherboards, if you just look up Gigabyte, you just filter by B650, which is the chipset of the motherboard. Look how many boards there are from one company. And just think, MSI, Asus, ASRock, name any motherboard maker you want. They've got probably just as many SKUs as this. My Gaming XAX board, is this really that much different than the Gaming XAX V2? What's, what's on the version two? What is a Gigabyte B650 UDAC? That's the thing, don't even get me started on monitors too. Companies that make monitors don't even want you to buy their monitors at this point. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Why is it so hard to figure out why, what you're buying and why does it feel like you're always getting scammed? Because this whole system is clearly meant to prey on people that aren't as tech savvy, that don't exactly know what they're getting. And even for people that are tech savvy, that do tons of research, when I see something like this, of all of AMD's processors for their computers, I still don't really know what all of these are, which is not really the point of a name. A name is supposed to tell you what you're getting and maybe something that you can also reference in a pretty short period of time as well. So where did this whole malicious naming scheme start? Where did it really all go wrong? Cause I wanna introduce you to something. I'm introducing you to Apple. I actually personally really like this naming convention for their chips. We got an M series chip, so an M3 means this is the third generation Apple M chip. We got an M3 Pro, and then there's also a Max version of the same chip. It just kind of upgrades how much, how many cores are on things, how much memory is available to the chip itself. And obviously, as you go from nothing to Pro to Max, it's going to cost quite a bit more money. A Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, and these chips here, and I've gone. It starts at like sixteen hundred dollars. Okay, it has an eight-core GPU or eight-core CPU and a ten-core GPU. But if we want to go up to the M3 Pro. This ends up starting at $2,000. And this one has 11 core CPU and a 14 core GPU. When we go to the M3 Max, this starts at $3,200, guys. That is a that is the Apple experience. 14 core CPU and a 30 core GPU. So this really just reflects M3. It's just pretty simple to understand for most people. A very similar thing here is with their iPhone. There's an iPhone 16, a 16 Plus, and a 16 Pro. And there's also a 16 Pro Max. I, I think it's so, there's a Pro Max. Can we add some more descriptors to this, please? I don't think there's enough. Can we add extreme maybe? I think it's hilarious when you click this and you go like, iPhone 16 Pro. <laughs> Isn't it just funny that like, hey, it's just telling you you're poor. It just shrinks. You're poor, you didn't buy the Pro Max. 
Apple really starts to open up the door of, hey, why do we see naming of CPUs and processors that kind of look like this? Why is it called a Ryzen AI 9 HX? Why does this one have a Max Plus in the name of the CPU itself? There is some weird stuff that Apple does do, but generally speaking, I think they do a great job of naming their products. And it makes me start to wonder is why can Apple keep their naming so simple but the other companies feel like they have to make all kinds of weird, confusing things. And say a company like Apple, well, they can have an M series chip, they can have an M Pro and an M Max, whatever. They can have those SKUs of the chip because Apple knows what they're putting into their systems. They are a closed ecosystem. Whereas companies like AMD and Intel, and even Nvidia in some cases here, these companies are an open ecosystem where they're selling these chips to different companies and system integrators in order to put those chips into another system. That's probably why a company like AMD here has so many SKUs and that puts them in a position where they need to figure out some way to name these things that kind of makes sense. I'm not saying this is right, but it is like, it makes sense why the products are named like this. I would prefer for them to be named in a more reasonable way that makes sense but like i said this doesn't really tell the whole story they're public companies guys public company want to make a big money you got to impress stockholders the investors you got to do that that's where the deviousness the, is that a word that's where all of that kind of stuff comes into play here these can completely scam you intel's say their older generation processors their 13th gen on laptops 13650HX in this case. Now this guy has six performance cores and eight E cores, resulting in 20 threads on the processor. And I want you to keep that number in mind, 20 threads. Now let's scroll down on this page. And this is a U series processor, which is typically supposed to be a more power efficient one. And you can see that a CPU with almost the exact same name, 1365, but it has a U instead of an HX, only two count them two performance cores and eight efficiency cores so the same amount of efficiency cores but that results in only 12 threads for the cpu so even though it has a very similar name just because the u means power efficiency doesn't mean that you would think that you cut your cores and probably your cpu performance in like half You'd think it would be really similar based on the naming of it, but that just is not at all true. Think because it says nine in front of it or something, this could say a two or a three. That's actually an older architecture, but it looks like it's in a new generation because of this year that is actually the first number. Are lined up with AMD 7000 series desktop processors, but actually this 7530U is a 5000 series processor or it would be on desktop because it is an older generation. It's so easy to not know exactly what you're getting and easily get scammed. And then with their new processors, they have these AI things that are three numbers, just like Intel did it for whatever reason, AMD copied them. AMD's naming convention completely switched up again and is intentionally trying to misconstrue and deceive the customer to thinking in some cases that you're buying something better than you actually are. Or it just allows AMD to sell older parts in a newer generation so that they themselves can save money. They can act like they made a new generation of product when they didn't actually make a new generation of products. So that's two things. These numbers, when you compare it to the competition, it can make it look like AMD's processors are already generations ahead of the competition. That's because they have a three here. You can see that AMD's Ryzen 365 is actually an older generation product compared to Intel's 258 generation. These namings are so stupid. I, and I hate that these Intel names are gonna be coming to the desktop side too. But because it is a three here, it makes you think that this is a newer generation product to the Intel ones, even though it's actually older. It's kind of like Ooga Booga Booga kind of stuff. It's really simple, but that tactic for marketing actually does work and allows these companies to take advantage of the consumer, especially somebody who doesn't really do a massive amount of research into a product before they buy it. But I would argue naming conventions, like how Intel had before, made a lot more sense to more people than their new ones, like this here, a Core i9, 14th gen. This makes a lot more sense than whatever this is. I just think this whole naming convention thing is starting to get out of hand, and it only seems like it's going to get worse 
with AMD's new generation of processors. And I just feel bad for the market. It's so easy to buy something and be unimpressed by it, especially in a time where money is a lot more tight. It seems like these companies are trying to nickel and dime you out of every single cent that they possibly can just to sell you a worse product in the end of the day. Basically shrinkflation or enshittification of everything that we're buying. This used to be something that was much easier to understand. And nowadays it just isn't. Really the only company that is doing it right right now, and I hate to say it, is Apple. It doesn't make me want to buy it, but it makes me understand what I would be buying if I were to get the product. Just stay wary. Okay, if you're buying any products, just know what you're buying and do your research. Shout out to like channels like Hardware Canucks. They really do a good, good thing for the community to make people aware of what you are buying and what the actual advantages are. Because say here with Lunar Lake that they reviewed here, the advantage isn't performance, even though you might think bigger number better, but it's actually battery life. That's where Intel's new generation of products, at least on laptops, is generally quite a bit better. Feels like at the moment that buying anything at PC or tech related is just a scam. This is probably in Nvidia's worst generation or their last two generations with their worst two generations of naming graphics cards. So that's been it for me. Good luck buying stuff out there. If you are looking to buy and I don't blame you right now. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Y'all try to have a good one and uh, peace.